Okay, we're getting ready to close half now. Okay, I don't know. The United States space program continues to advance. America is putting larger, more complex, and more expensive spacecraft into orbit and outer space. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine ignition. 4, 3, 2, 1. And we have solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of America's space shuttle on a source mission, and we have cleared the tower. The new Centaur high energy upper stage for the space shuttle is predicted to play an important role in future space missions, allowing us to put these advanced payloads in geosynchronous orbit and on planetary exploration missions. But as the benefits of the space program accrue to our society, we must realize that the cost of failure is rising also. And because of the increased size, sophistication, and complexity of our spacecraft, there are more opportunities for components and subsystems to fail. Yet the launch systems must work the first time because there are generally no test flights. What are the costs of failure? They could be so far reaching it would be impossible to quantify in dollars and cents. The space transportation system as a primary launch vehicle is reusable and any damage resulting from interaction with a payload can affect current and future missions. And paramount to all mission objectives is flight crew safety. Even minor schedule delays can mean a missed launch window, which can set back scientific missions by a year or more. The Centaur G Prime was designed by General Dynamics Space Systems Division under the direction of NASA Lewis Research Center as a high-performance upper stage to boost a variety of Earth-orbiting satellites and interplanetary spacecraft using the Space Shuttle Orbiter as a launch platform. Missions for the Centaur G Prime include the Galileo probe to Jupiter and the Ulysses probe, which will orbit over the Sun's poles after passing by Jupiter. The consequences of missing the scheduled launch date are significant because the launch window for Jupiter comes only once every 13 months. How can the success of missions involving Centaur G Prime be ensured? The aerospace industry has always used comprehensive analytical models to verify the integrity of space vehicles, since it is simply too cost and time prohibitive to test fly hardware under the actual mission environments. The design of aerospace structures must be extremely efficient because weight is a precious commodity on any launch vehicle. Solid geometric models can be developed on the computer to conceptualize spacecraft component design and system configuration. This type of model characterizes the geometry, weight, and inertia properties of a space structure and is excellent for the visual communication of the evolving design. Interference evaluations are a byproduct of such models. Efficient structural design also requires the accurate definition of design loads, which are derived from dynamic analysis using another type of computer model. These finite element and finite difference models are generated for use in assessing the structural integrity of the spacecraft under a variety of environmental conditions. While formulated with extreme care, these computer models are not perfect. Assumptions must be made. For example, all loads input to the Centaur and spacecraft during launch are transferred through the cargo bay attachment fittings. These fittings are designed to provide support only in certain directions and to be free sliding in other directions so that the loads are transferred appropriately. However, there is always some friction in these joints, so they are not completely free to slide. And the analyst who is building structural models for verification of the design cannot be sure how significant this friction is or how to properly include it in his models. Other assumptions must be made as well. For example, we can never be sure just how stiff a given bolted, riveted, or welded connection is. Nor do we know the exact properties of the materials being used, since there are variances from sample to sample. And we never know exactly how to represent complex spacecraft environments, such as those which occur during a launch or landing. The tests were performed with the oxygen tanks full to simulate launch conditions, 
and empty to simulate landing conditions in the event of an aborted mission. The analysis models corresponding to these configurations will be used to predict the structural loads which will be transmitted between the shuttle and the Centaur during launch or during landing. In the second, or free-free configuration, the Centaur and spacecraft are restrained only by relatively soft springs to simulate free spaceflight conditions after deployment from the shuttle bay. Of interest here are the loads imposed by the Centaur rocket engines and any possible interaction between the inertial reference unit, or IRU, and the engine controller as it affects guidance and control of the Centaur and spacecraft. Tests were performed with the oxygen tank full, two-thirds full, one-third full, and empty to simulate the Centaur and spacecraft as the fuel is depleted during the mission. The modal test of the Centaur with payload was performed at the General Dynamics Convair Division Sycamore Canyon Test Facility in San Diego, California. The test article was mounted in a four-story support tower, providing ready access to all areas of the structure. Testing was conducted with the tower covered to provide protection from environmental factors. The test article itself consisted of flight quality hardware for the Centaur vehicle, including the engines, liquid oxygen and hydrogen propellant tanks, and the spacecraft adapter. In the cargo configuration, the Centaur's support structure was also mounted in the tower. Mass simulators represented various instrumentation packages on board the Centaur, as well as the Galileo spacecraft attached to the forward adapter. Various types of instrumentation were distributed about the structure in order to measure its response during testing. This instrumentation included strain gauges to measure engine actuator loads, accelerometers to measure mode shape, displacement transducers to evaluate sliding in the Centaur to orbiter attachment fittings, load cells to determine load interaction between the Centaur and orbiter, and pressure transducers to study fluid mass action in the liquid oxygen tanks. Next to the test tower is the data acquisition trailer, which serves as the control center during testing. Here, the test engineers can select the appropriate transducer signals to be viewed, processed, or stored by adjusting controls on a switch panel. Next, the shakers are turned on and the levels and frequency adjusted. Data can be sampled on the GenRAD 2515 data acquisition system and processed in real time to ensure that test conditions are correct. After determining that all conditions are correct, the data is collected and stored on a disk drive attached to a special purpose cyber data acquisition computer. This computer incorporates 192 channels of analog to digital data converters for the acquisition of signals from the transducers on the test article. The acquired data can be printed or stored on removable disks or magnetic tape for archival purposes, or for distribution to NASA, General Dynamics, SDRC, JPL, STI, or MSC. The data can also be played back to the GenRAD system for further viewing or processing. It is also possible to process data on a remote computer through the use of a telecommunications link. A final test performed with the Centaur in the cargo configuration was the twang test, in which the structure was displaced from its undeformed equilibrium position and then suddenly released. The resulting response history was then compared with an analytical prediction using the pretest computer model. This test excited many modes of the structure simultaneously and provided a true transient response similar to liftoff or landing to use in the correlation of the computer model. The whole process of experimental verification of the loads analysis models for the Centaur G prime has been completed on schedule and has demonstrated the importance of modal testing to the Centaur program. 
The result has been improved analytical models, more accurate prediction of Centaur and shuttle orbiter loads, and greater confidence in the success of future Centaur missions. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the star of our show today, Shuttle Centaur number one. <laughs>